Uh, I welcome you all to our first Google Hangout for the mentorship track. Great to have all of you over here, and thank you so much, Mr. Roni, for being here with us. Uh, moving on, so uh, we have 60 minutes where we have eight participants talking to Roni and having a personal discussion with them regarding whatever uh, they want. Okay. So, uh, as I have earlier mentioned, the order that we are moving in, uh, I just request everybody to be very precise and clear with their questions so that we can uh, move forward in a, move forward as soon as possible. Okay? So, I am going to everybody right now and I'll be starting with giving control over to Yasmin. So, and also, yes, so, uh, Ronnie, you can hear me, right? Great. So, uh, just a minute, guys. Okay, so starting off, Yasmin, you can hear me? Yes, I can hear. Okay, Yasser, so uh, you could move ahead with your, uh, you can start off by asking your question. Rani, you are not audible. Uh, hello, just, uh, Rani, we can't hear you. No, no. Just a second, let's just see if it's working or not. Nikhil? Yes, yes, it's working now. It's working now. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just get up. Yeah, we just, it was without earphones, so that's the problem. Okay. So let's start? Yes, yes, yes let's start. Yasir, yeah, uh, we'll start with you. Great. Okay. Yeah, uh, Yanani, I mean, uh, I also posted this uh, question over the forum also. Like be, being an early start stage, I mean, like we have uh, an idea. We discuss with many people like how how should it be shaped out. Now we want to create a minimum viable product, but we are struggling to build a team with limited funds, and we want to I mean do it with I mean uh, sufficiently fast paced. So how can we I mean solve and how can we attract the good developers uh, to work with us? Okay, uh, give me a little bit more in detail. So, uh, what is the funding you put into the company so far? Sorry, come again. Say it again. What is the funding you put into the company so far? So, I have like, I mean, uh, saved some of the funds from my personal savings, okay, like five thousand dollars. So, we have hired some freelancers and we try to, I mean, uh, build our product and try to roll out in the market. And based on those okay, feedbacks, we want to I mean, modify those things. So is but, your question uh, about attracting talent or anything else? Is your specific question on talent? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the kind of talent is that what what pay scale are you looking at hiring this talent? I mean, we, uh, I mean, we know like we, there are the developers who can understand the business, but they are very expensive, which cannot we cannot I mean afford them at this moment. So how can we even motivate them and attract them those good developers? What trade-offs we sh should we do at this early stage? Yeah. Can you hear me still? Yes. Yes.
Guys, I think Rani has disconnected. Just uh, give us two minutes. We'll just troubleshoot it and he'll be back. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes. Can anyone hear me? Yes, yes. yes, yes. Okay, yes, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Uh, okay, so now I can go. If, if everyone's good, then I can use this earphone. This is much clearer. Thanks. So I would say, look, um, the, the big challenge, if I can a little bit more get into the specifics of the situation, the first question is, uh, what at what pay scale are you looking at hiring these people? No, currently, like, I mean, we are in the validation uh, I mean, uh, stage, so we want to create the minimum viable product and try to get the, as much as feedbacks from the customers and try to modify the, uh, shape the product accordingly. But the developers are not uh, with the same pace which we are tr trying to do it. I mean, they are not trying to understand those things and they they do it something which is which we doesn't, I mean, doesn't tell them to do it. So, I mean, to no, so afford this is not a hiring question, right? This is a not a hiring question. Then this is a question where you're, because I want to just get more specific on this. This is not a hiring question as much as it is you've got the people, but you've not got the caliber of people, or you've got the people, but they don't buy into what you're asking them to do. Yeah, and we don't have this that kind of budget, I mean, to afford the people like we are looking for. And uh, uh, one of your co-founders is in technology or not? No, no, no. The, the other guy is like business guy. I am mainly in the technology, but I have like a full-time job and I'm trying out this idea. So, I mean, uh, we want to validate the idea so that we can full go full-time, I mean, after I mean, confirming so the I'd, market. I'd like two things. Uh, you know, partly you're not going to get, you're not going to get the right talent if you're not full-time involved. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not about just hiring the talent. And you need to think about why you're sitting on the fence on this um, of course, you have a lot to lose if you think you can give up a job. But if you're very convinced about the product, you are a technology person. You're not going full time. Why do you expect somebody else to come on full time at a low salary to go out and do uh, what you want them to do? But I mean, if, if we if we go full time, we want to validate before going into the full time, like whether the whether it has good potential or not. Then isn't it cheaper to get some uh, people who want to do this on a freelance basis? So we're trying to solve it with using using the freelance. So. And you're saying you're not getting freelance people also? No, we are getting the freelance, but we're not getting the quality and the uh, the way like we want to develop shape the product. Okay, but here's the question: uh, If you have a budget of three lakhs or one lakh or four lakhs, and if you up that ante, the point is the more you time you waste with uh, less caliber people. A, you'll never get out there, and number two, you might as well push it with freelance people for two, three months, but pay them a little higher fee, because if that's your, if your test of concept budget is 20 lakhs, but you're trying to spend 7 lakhs, then you'll have a problem, and you don't want to move. So all mm -hmm. I'm saying is that maybe part of your reason is you're not being able to fundamentally solve a couple of things. One is nobody seriously is going to join you because of the simple reason that you have not shown the commitment by moving out of your job. So why should okay. somebody else? Second, if you're really clear that this is first thing, then you've got to go out there and put a budget, which is obviously not the budget you're working for. So why can't you up the budget a little bit for you to get whoever you want to get? And the third is, is there any way you're going to attract somebody else that says, if this works, we'll also give you skin in the game and give them some sense of uh, stock option if you think that is an important person. So, yeah, that, that's what I want to know more about. Like, how, what trade-off we should, like, how much stock options should no, we No, I think that develop? depends on percentage of the caliber of the person. Obviously, it will be in the low single digits if I were you, uh, mm -hmm. and that they need to understand the value of it. 
but I would say one thing. I think I would have a big problem if you're not, if there's no full-time commitment from the founders. That you need to not undermine that thing whether you like it or not. So I'm not recommending that you leave your job um, mm -hmm. because if you think that's a high risk. But it's a, that to me is as big a challenge as you not being able to attract people. So I would introspect about that. So I mean like uh, going full time, uh, you're not advising it, but uh, how can we solve it like going full time? I mean, what oh, should no, be, I'm, what should I'm advising it, but I'm not recommending it because each one to their own. I can't take responsibility for the fact that you're testing a concept, uh, but you're not moving and becoming moving into that. If you're convinced about it right now, you'll make it happen. But obviously you're sitting on the fence and trying to make it happen. So firstly, that's a 50% momentum. People get that body language. Mm -hmm. People get that thought process. And I would urge you that it's a risk you have to take. If you're convinced that I'll make this product work, you'll figure out a way. And second is you up the budget, get a few more caliber people. In my opinion, finally you might land up spending a lot more money getting non low caliber people for a longer period of time and not getting anywhere else. And the third is that you might finally not do this thing for the wrong reasons. Not because the product didn't work, but because you didn't move, you got substandard people, and therefore nothing really worked out. And actually, this had a good chance of succeeding, but you never gave it everything you got. So okay. I would say these are the three things you should think about deeper. Yeah, I, I got it. Okay. All right. Okay. Should we move to someone else? Have you got? Are you got a follow-up question? No, no, no. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you so much, Rani. Uh, thank you so much, Yasser, for the question too. Uh, I think now we'll uh, move on to just a minute. Yeah, so Tahir, can you hear me? Tahir, I think your mic is muted. Hello, Tahir. I know I still can't hear you. We still can't hear you. Is it okay now? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. It's fine okay. now. So, Tahir, All you right. can Thank go ahead with your question. Hi, Ronnie. Hi. Uh, my, my question is you know, uh, we run a publishing company over here in Dubai and an exhibition organizing company. And we focus on cleaning, hygiene, uh, waste management, laundry, and car care. These are the uh, five segments on which we have magazines and we have exhibitions. Now we wanted to take this further and develop an online portal uh, on you know, providing services and products to the end consumers. I wanted to first ask as an entrepreneur to you, do you think uh, this particular concept has got a viability to scale further? So I think it's not a question of viability scale. You're looking at, do you think this concept can work online? Yes. Right, because there are two questions to that, and I want you to break that up. The fact that you have five magazines and you're doing ground events only in Dubai, and I presume this magazine is only for the Middle East or Dubai, whatever else. If you're looking yes. at scale, you could first look at what you want to do in these two areas in which you've actually found success in some form or the other, which is... Sure. Um, so I would not put scale as diversification. You can find scale in exactly these. You can be looking at events in larger territories or in very other places if you've got a good template or do it more often or do it biannually is also is also going to give you scale. So I think that's one part that I think you should give a thought to. The second one is, yeah, uh, so that's on scale. So now the question is, you, you feel, do I feel that the diversification is a good idea for you? Is that yeah. your question? Because I want you to understand yes. that you're actually now diversifying. Yes, so going online. So is your present business profitable, the events and the publishing? Yes, it is. It is mm -hmm. profitable. And how, long have been, how long have you been in this business? Seven years. And what's been the growth percentage year on year? Well, we or started. Has it not the, it's been flat. No, it's been going, uh, say, 20% every year. So why would you not focus on that, and why do you want to go online? Only because just online seems to be the thing. Is that also your core competence? What is the additional investment that yeah. you'll want to make in that? Will that turn your profit into a loss for the next two three years because you'll in online, you'd want to do marketing, you'd want to do UI, UX, you'll do many other things. And what, according to you, is the plan that you've made now that you're pretty much into this business that can show you that in the next two to three years, this can augment it much more versus this plan, this business, which in any case is growing at 20%, can you think of five ways or three ways or two ways 
in which to make it grow at 50% a year for the next two to three years. And would that be more rewarding? Or do you think this online will add a lot more value? But it's a competitive field. It's also a field in which you know you may succeed, you may not succeed, or even if you do succeed, it may be in, in at a particular level. I think these are all these questions is what you really need to ask yourself very clearly and okay. have very, very frank answers to yourself. You know, because I think many people think diversification is for the sake of going for diversification. And I would say you're onto a good thing and you're growing at twenty percent. Why not scale that up first? Unless you're missing a big opportunity in online. In which case, pen down what are you missing in online and what will be the investment and have you made a business plan of online? So these are my broad questions. Do you want to uh, give me some basic answers on those? See, uh, basically, uh, we've just worked on a sketch of if we go at online, uh, we have already connections with the suppliers who basically are our advertisers or our exhibitors. And if we want to get them on board, we already have a relationship with them. We already have a B2B segment of people whom we send out magazines to and whom who are the visitors for our exhibitions. So right. we already have a broad the database of people who can be potential buyers of B2B segment. Now yep. What are we trying is to reach to B2C also. Yep. So we collectively want B2B and this portal to be a B2B and a B2C portal and yep. give a wider uh, range to our exhibitors and right. advertisers. Right. What we're looking at. It's a very uh, rough idea what we have in our mind. Since we already are in the business, we have a better chance to succeed than anybody else. Nobody else is doing this right now in the What's region. What's the revenue potential of it over the next two to three years? See, in terms of, uh, you know, we, we, we have no idea on what, you know, uh, what, uh, what rate is the equipment being sold over here or what rate is the cleaning service being bought so over see, here. I mean, in, a, in an eight minute uh, interaction, plus for somebody who doesn't understand the business, I have to be cautious enough to give you the answers with a little bit more questions so that you can probe yourself. That's the best value I, I can do. So sure. I think you need to write down uh, your focus areas of where you are versus this diversification. Why are you diversifying? And you okay. need to have some hard questions to why you're diversifying. Second is make that three-year business plan on it, whatever it may be. Discount it also for learning lessons, both in terms of investments and things going wrong in an area which you don't know about. And see whether that's going to hurt your business three years down the line. Okay. Uh, third. If you had to just not do this diversification, what more would you do with your existing business over the next three years other than the 10 to 20 percent growth? Sure. If you like the answer better of what more can I do with my existing business, you might want to give that some thought. If you believe you're getting left out of something by not diversifying into online, then you may look at that. But the online as a business versus online as an extension of your service are two different things because you might approach the project quite differently if it's an extension of giving your customers better stuff and it's self-fulfilling versus it becoming a separate profit center. Exactly. exactly. And you're starting with, this, with the sentence that you just did, which is, see, I don't know much about this and we're going to get to learn, which is nothing wrong with that. You can learn on the job, uh, but you're going to make mistakes. So how much yeah. of your profit do you want to give up for that also? If you're forcing yourself to go raise equity only for this, again, you need to question, is that a good idea? And why do I want to dilute what I otherwise have? and bring in an investor would be another question you would need to ask yourself. Do you have any investors or this is a private company? It's a private, it's a family owned business. Would you, would after this, because of this or after this, would you go out to raise funds? Well, we don't need to raise funds as of now. Because for this or yeah. for anything else. So the investor yeah. part is irrelevant. No, irrelevant, yeah. We just want Sorry. to develop a good product which is, you know, extension. Yeah. So what is, I would say, do you want to develop a product for the, as an extension of a service or as a new profit center? Why new diversification? Center. Is it worth it? If you put that same focus and resources to your existing business, three years from now, will you be happier with your existing businesses having grown by 40% a year instead of 20% or that you have this new thing? If all roads give you those clear answers, I think you should proceed on that basis. All right. Thank you does so much. Does that make sense? It does, it does. It does at least give a clear idea for asking some questions to my own self. And yeah, probably and, give some sketch of the business and plan. Being blunt, question, being very blunt with yourself and very frank and open with yourself is sure. another thing. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank Sean. you. Thanks. Thank you so much, Yasser, for that question. Uh, now we'll be moving on to Subha. Good evening, Rani. Good evening. 
Hi. Um, I recently moved out of a corporate job. Uh, I was in uh, banking operations and technology for over 15 years. Uh, so now I've moved out to start something on my own and I have multiple skills and interests having managed uh, large teams and processes. What I wanted to understand was can I start more than one business line so to speak and work on them to see which gives me a better chance of uh, profitability, scalability and even personal satisfaction. Uh, does it have to be sequential? And the kind of work I'm talking about is that there is already what I've started on let's say on corporate training and workshops. There is specific banking consulting that I'm doing for certain banks. Uh, there is coaching and mentoring on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Uh, and there's a certain tech tool that I want to build for the training that I do. So while I've, because I've stepped out and I'm on my own, I've kind of put my finger in a lot of pies. So is it okay to kind of see how each one pans out? Or does it have to be so the here's one my, piece? So here's my here's my view, coming? firstly. Uh, is this you alone or? Right now it's me alone. Uh, and all these services are you as a professional doing okay. it okay. and if you did all of this would you how many members of a team would you add to this so I would need to add members definitely for a lot of content creation for the uh, trainings and uh, also a lot of you know writing proposals sourcing clients etc so, so which two was years from now if you had to pick between these four or all four what do you think you'd be happiest doing uh, I think I would be happiest where I am doing a lot of uh, interaction with people in a workshop and coaching and training them. So um, which of these four things? I'm saying cut to two years. Let's assume right now you're doing it for the quest, uh, for the reason of asking, for assessing, right? Yes. The problem is that I think we get very lost in the fact that you know all of these four and it's a cutoff, and it's very difficult when you started these four and each of them have got some traction of the other. Yes then to start taking a call is becomes even more difficult than the stage you're in right now. So I think your complication, your complication for your answers are going to be more in three months and six months than they are right now. Because at that stage is when you'll, each of them will have traction and how are you going to make up your mind. And then the temptation is going to come to say, let me do all four. Let me start with one, two people here, one, two people here, one, two people here, one, two people here. Yeah. And if that's what you think two years from now you'd be happiest doing, which means first I'm a multitasker, mm -hmm. and then I'm a X, and then I'm a Y. There's no wrong or right. I think it's a question of then you need to assess between these four. If I did them, if I did one, would it be bigger than these four put together? And I can tell you nine out of ten times the answer is yes. Okay. Nine out of ten times the answer is yes. That once you decide to focus on something, it's not that all four won't do well and they'll all four do well. But I'm just saying if if each of these businesses were supposed to be two, 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 two crore business in two years from now and they reach eight crores of revenue or whatever, or 80 lakhs of revenues. The question is if you focused on one of them, would you be able to do 16 crores of business in that same period of time because you focused on it and your resources were not split because in each thing, don't forget, you're hiring people, then you're delegating to them. These are all very specific professional services, a lot based on your vision, your communication skills, your ability to do it. And the minute you de dilute it, it gets, it's uh, delegated, it gets diluted. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be my view. Now, having said all of that, the first thing that you asked me was, is it good for me to do it as a trial period? If I would say absolutely nothing wrong with that, provided you're brutal about what is that trial period and that you are going to come to a conclusion at the end of the trial period. And mm -hmm. that trial period is not actually your excuse to start to multitask because you're getting comfortable with all four. Understood. Thank you. So, and I think a trial period could be three, six, three months or six months, depending on what are you trying. Are you trying responses? Are you trying... Will people pay? Will people come for this service versus people will come for here? Is one a B2B service? Which one is a B2C service? Is Are you more a B2B person where you feel every day is a new day because I want new customers because that has its risks also? Or mm -hmm. I want four or five clients and therefore I want to get into this business? The, all of that, if those are questions you need to get answered, do it in a finite period of time. Sure. But with a clear-cut decision, even if you got traction in all four, you will come to a conclusion only one or maybe two. Okay. And a, a small follow-up question on that, and you mentioned in terms of building a team maybe uh, at some point and getting folks to help me out. So at what point do you start building? Even, let's say, six months down the line, I've settled no, wait, on... Wait, wait, so wait, wait. So first, if you're in experimentation stage to figure out what you want to do, you better be doing it on your own, maximum with okay. one person and an assistant. 
-hmm. When you finish that and you've decided that this is the one I'm going to go, th on that very day you have to start building your team. Okay. However, as I said, my danger is you'll fall in love with all four and you'll want to do all four mm -hmm. and you need to watch out for that. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. But for most exactly. people, you have to yeah. figure out, you know, what's the cost for, you know, you're how do you want to play this? Four, perhaps. By going into all four, you're maybe limiting all four and how much you can achieve. You will for sure limit all four because especially since it's a professional job, you know, then at that stage, and that's why, you know, lawyers form partnership firms and the best mm -hmm. law, law firms are ones that form partnership because somebody's in contract law, somebody's an expert in litigation, somebody's in M&A. Mm -hmm. And the fact of the matter is, you can't be a law firm which is only one lawyer and four assistants. It's different from having four partners in a law firm because then at partner level you're giving it. You know what I'm saying? So you draw that same example. Sure. That's what would be relevant for you. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Who's next? Oh, you're on mute. Oh, I'm Hello? on mute? No, yes, no. yes, 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 I, yes, I was on mute, so sorry for that. Sanket, I think your mic yeah. is muted. Sanket, can you hear us? Yeah. Hello, Tony. Yes, yeah. I was. Actually, I, hello. Go ahead, Sank. Actually, I want yeah, go to, ahead, Sanket. Hello, yeah. Actually, I want to know about how to build a core team. Means uh, from technology, and from marketing, and product management, and all that. Means uh, how is the... Can you hold mic a little closer so I can hear you a little bit better? Hello. Just hold your mic a little closer. Yeah, Hello. thank you. It's yeah, fine. go ahead. Yeah. Actually, I want to know how to form a core team. Okay. Is building a team is the issue and uh, what kind of policy, hiring policy is to be used? What kind of hiring policy? Yeah. Or core team. See, I mean, I'd love to help you and answer that question, but I think you'd have to be a little bit more specific because I don't have a background on your business. I have no idea how to hire a core team. This actually, I would requires have a very fundamental questions of first, yeah. you know, are you alone? Firstly, are you the first? Are you the first person? You already got a team? No, no, I'm a only one person working on this. So, have you started your business? No, especially uh, the. So, what's the plan? Because I think. Yeah, I okay, I could be a potential first employer, uh, yeah. employee. Why don't you sell me your business for a minute? Yeah, actually, I work for. Uh, want to work for. Real but estate. finding a little difficult to hear you. That's the only problem. Is there any way we can get? Hello. Yeah. Uh, just hold the mic a little closer, or try and, or just drop the mic and see what happens. Yeah. Try it there. Hello. Right now. Okay. Yeah. If you could talk a little louder, maybe that might be better. Yeah. Okay. Actually, I wanted to work for a real estate and that is specific for commercial real estate, okay? And uh, already market players are there only, but uh, I have a little bit better idea to the approach towards the customer. Okay. So, uh, now, uh, issue is to, uh, to form a uh, prototype or a product, I want a technology guy and uh, marketing guy. So, how to form, uh, how to get that people on board? Means, um, what, what should a... Uh, policy I will use for hiring the people. So if I'm your first employee, my first question would be, so what, A, what's, in one line, can you explain to me your business? Uh, commercial real estate business. Okay. okay. And how so much office, funding, office, how much funding have you got for it? How much funding yeah. have you got for it? Personal funding is about 5 lakhs. And this, you're going to do this as an agency or what is the business yeah. model? Yeah, same like agency. And what is my job description? What do you, what kind of people are you hiring? Sorry. What are the kind of people you're hiring? What's the job description? Or give yeah, me in uh, one line, what what are the kind of people you're hiring? Uh, for uh, product uh, develop uh, design development of uh, technology. Yeah. Right. Okay. Which city are you in? Uh, Mumbai. Sorry. Mumbai. Mumbai. Uh, Mumbai. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Okay. Tough place for from a technology point of view, I can tell you that there's limited resources, uh, and depends almost on which geography of Mumbai you're in. Um, okay, so, and I think the question here is getting your first one or two people on job because after that it becomes a little easier. And how many people are you planning to hire? Two, three, at least, initially. And how long have you been trying for this and not getting through? 
for last one one and a half month. And nobody is joining you. How many people have you yeah. met? How many people uh, have you met? Eight or ten, but nobody is ready to leave the job. How many people have you met? Eight or ten. Eight or ten people. And you've met them, and all of them are saying they're presently in jobs. Yeah, right. And they're in large companies or in startups? No, no, large companies. Ha. Huh. So that was one of the things I would point out to you that definitely you're not a candidate to take people out from a large company. Okay. So one of the things you might want to think of is that maybe you might be looking in the wrong place. Uh, and I'm not saying it's the wrong place, but you might not be looking in a place in which you're going to get immediate results for your first two, three people. So, you know, so chances are if you can... Ooh, I've got an echo now. So um, chances are if you can just do it in a place where... Um, in, in startups, I think that might be definitely a better place to start than in large companies because I don't see you getting... I think that could be one of your problems why nobody's joining you because they've got job security of a different nature. You're the single person there. You're looking at a business with a 5 lakh funding. So somebody's going to say you're going to run out of funds. Even if you promise me an X, X amount of salary, that could be 50% of the funds allocated by you. How are we going to do this? Um, I need to have a little bit more of a startup and risk appetite to join you. And I don't think you'll find that with large companies. Hello? Hello? Yeah, did you hear that? Yeah. Does that make sense? But, uh, okay, so suppose I want a high-end technology guy, okay, then I have to go for large companies only, you know? Hello? Um, you may want a high-end technology person, but I think that's something you have to grow into because the point is if you've tried it for one and a half months, the reality is you're not finding anybody, right? So nobody's... Yeah. Why would a high-end technology person join a startup in what is otherwise commercial real estate, which is not, which is not known for high tech in that thought process, right? You're not. I mean, it's not a cutout or a, a, a sort of a really large segmented business. It's something that a lot of people are doing in any case. So yeah, I think you should be realistic a little bit and start. Otherwise, you might get stuck for a long period of time. And so I'm just giving it to you in a practical sense. Okay. If you're not finding that absolute caliber person and you're looking for two or three, find the other one or two team members because at least you started off. Yeah, right. I would okay. be I would be practical in my approach on this. Uh, yeah. Not look for MNCs, not look for that top guy. Because you got a five lakh kitty. Why would a top guy and what is the salary range you're looking at for the top guy? I'm sorry? Hello? Yeah, what kind of salary range per annum would it be? It's not defined, no? that, that's why I'm asking you. No, so I think if you're getting someone from a large company, there'll be a much higher expectation. So I would say uh, get the first two people, be practical in your approach and start okay. start with not absolute startups, but other smaller companies from which people might feel okay. And the last thing I would tell you is I'm. you'll need to sell them as to what is so unique about you because if you just say I'm in you know, real estate, people will say, yeah, yeah but there are thousands and thousands so, of people. Yeah, right, right. Okay. So I'm not getting I'm not getting totally sold on you. So maybe you might want to rehearse and sort of practice how you're going to pitch yourself better to inspire okay. people. Okay. Because that quotient you'll need if you want to get talent in Mumbai in this field in okay. just a thing called real estate where most people will anyway there's so many people in there. Yeah, right. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Who's next? Okay, thank you, Sanket, for your question. Niranjan, could you please unmute, unmute your mic? Niranjan, it's your turn now. You could go ahead with the question. Hi, Roni. Hey. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, uh, uh, to uh, introduce uh, this thing, uh, first of all, I'll tell myself, uh, I'll, I'm a surgeon. I'm a surgical gastroenterologist. Uh, I've been in uh, patient care for the past 10 years. Uh, having treated patients in uh, several public sector and private sector hospitals, uh, one thing I understood was, you know, there are only three types of patients usually we encounter every day. So the first set goes for uh, public, uh, I mean, uh, popular measures who uh, private hospitals treat them under something like Arugya Shri, Kapit Titamandal, which are very famous in South India. The second set of patients are usually, uh, they uh, come under corporate uh, insurance and corporate companies. 
and the third set of people are yeah, they they are usually the significant chunk uh, 50 to 60 percent uh, they usually occupy the uh, uh, base of the pyramid and they pay from their pockets so usually when it comes to uh, this these patients they have the added stress of uh, paying bills apart from uh, uh, the stress of the disease or their loved ones going through the treatment process so I've, I've seen in hospitals I've treated and then uh, there are several incidences where I've de I did one appendicectomy for 500 rupees to 50,000 rupees. Okay, the, the treatment procedure remains the same. And then I spoke to several private hospitals. Uh, these people, they are ready to do for a fixed price, fixed price. Just say for example, uh, cholecystectomy, uh, that is gallbladder surgery in a private hospital under their yeah, So just first get a little bit of the question, so I have a context of where you're going with this. Yeah, so it's like basically in one word, a fixed treatment cost uh, for elective procedures, elective procedures, all in, uh, irrespective of complication. Patient comes in, he pays this fixed amount for a procedure and goes out uh, all in, irrespective of the complications. Okay. Yeah. So the I. That's I, your model. Yeah, there's a model. To offer that to people as a fixed charge versus yeah. uh, the variable charge where things go wrong, you have to go to ICU, you have to hang around the hospital for ten days. E exactly. Yeah. So irrespective of all that, you know, it is it just say for example, it's fifty thousand. They pay fifty thousand, and then everything is done and done in that. And your model is that you might you you're building in a, an insurance premium in that in that if if it was just forty thousand, you might charge forty five thousand. But you're averaging out the risk of everything else. Is that yeah, is that yeah, yeah, that's what it is. That's what and it is. And this would be in a particular geography or you'll tie up by doing this with hospitals or yeah, I'm going to uh, uh, tie up with only the accredited hospitals with uh, good NABH, NABL, JCI like that. Uh, best care and best centers at a fixed price. Right. Yeah. And I spoke to a couple of hospitals, like you know, 800 bedded hospital, the CFOs of a uh, couple of very big hospitals, and I got a validation, and they are very happy. They are ready to take it. The my problem is uh, where to go. I I, I have uh, I'm I've reached the validation stage now, and uh, I, I'm uh, I'm pretty I'm not sure about the revenue model, whether to go f go for a subscription kind of model or a revenue sharing model. With who? Uh, with the hospitals. In the hospitals, the patient. So, what is the subscription model? I understand what is the revenue sharing model. What is the subscription model? The subscription model is like basically you and uh, you, you associate with us, or uh, we once they tie up with us, they pay uh, X amount to for a month, and then uh, whoever patient, uh, whoever uh, they go through. No, us they pay the who? Pool. The hospital pays who? Your company? Yeah, the hospitals pay. Paying customers are the hospitals. Paying customers are the hospitals. Patients will come and choose the hospitals and the, uh, the surgery there and they go to that particular hospital to get the procedure done. So the hospital is paying you a fee? Exactly. Um, for you being an agent that is going to canvas and bring customers who want to do a fixed cost option for a treatment or a surgery? Exactly. Okay. Now, so what exactly is your question? That the revenue model. Should I go for a subscription model or the revenue model because I'm a little bit... Yeah, so uh, just again pause. So give me the difference. What is the revenue model? What is the subscription model is the way no, you're sorry, telling... Sorry, 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 sorry. Revenue sharing model or subscription model. Yeah. So the revenue sharing means you're telling the hospital that it's 40... Th but it's their cost. So where's the revenue sharing? The revenue sharing might be 95.5, right, with you? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's what it is. I'm asking for 95 plus 5. Just say uh, taking that 5% uh, in that charge or just go for a subscription model. And subscription okay. model is? Like just a 30,000 per month, depending on the, just for example, uh, depending on the size of the hospital or, you know, the kind of hospital there. They have I think a lot of this depends on how, what's your a big picture and what's your long-term plan, how are you looking at scale? Because exactly. in the beginning, you can, see in the beginning, I would say try, I, if, I think you have to first understand what's your scale. You're going to do this with 50 hospitals, you see this in two years, three years time being, 700,000 patients, 70 patients, 50 patients, um, you know, and, and, and the, the largest facilities for the treatment will be the top 10, the top 5, whatever else. Just work that, ask those questions and put that down. Okay. Second, if depending on the scale at which you want to go, I think this is the early stage where if you're tying up with a chain of hospitals or even independent hospitals in multiple cities, yeah. 
you should try both the models for six months because it doesn't. There's no rule book in you right now that says I have to go the subscription model. I go the revenue model. So the best thing would be there's no harm learning from both and try both. Okay. So with Fortis, you can try the subscription model, and with Apollo, you can try the revenue model. Or with X Y Z in Hyderabad, you can try this. But Y Z X X in Hyderabad, you can try the subscription model. Oh, okay. uh, and why would you want to restrain yourself? Because what advice would you give yourself in a in a in a business like this unless you try it out? And you've got the luxury to try it out, so try it out. Yeah. And you can tell everyone because anyway, at the end of six months, people will want to review how many patients have you got, whatever else. My problem with you is that if you do a fixed fee, yeah. and it's a slow starter, then the hospital will grudge paying you that fee. Exactly. So and then for the wrong reasons they won't have a relationship with you for the long term whereas if you try both and see what is the demand you are because you, this is all one part of you are asking you are asking a simple question frankly i think you have more complicated questions to answer first yes. before this one is what yeah. i would advise you to think yeah. about yeah. also but on this question since you've asked that to me i would say try both uh, because you run a risk on a subscription model where if you don't get scale and you don't get this thing they'll grudge you your fee and for the wrong reason, you'll st stop the relationship, and then six months later, you'll question: Is this a workable business model? But you didn't take the right one or two decisions in the beginning that can allow it to be made into a business model. No, I'm yeah. little, I'm little biased towards the revenue share model because uh, 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 the thing is, uh, just say if I'm telling fifty thousand, my my plan is the patient pays the portal. That is me. So stay biased with it, but what's the harm in trying out the other one? Okay. Okay, because right. it gives me more control. This uh, in the interest, best interest of the. Then patient. you don't have a question in your mind. Yeah. Then you, then you're quite clear, and it's fine. You asked me that question, but I think you, you're, you're quite clear in your mind. But all I'm saying is, you have the luxury to try both. Yes, I do believe today that you're better off with a revenue model. Instinctively, you're better off with a revenue model, primarily because the upside is yours over a certain period of time. Second, you're not telling the hospital that you want a fee, and, uh, but you're actually working for every of your cases and whatever else, which is the right model, and they don't feel burdened because they feel you bring a patient, you take your money. You don't bring a patient, you don't take the money. So for all the reasons, I would say if you had to decide on that, and if I had to give you a recommendation, definitely it would be go for the revenue model. Yeah. But you've got the luxury to try out both. Yeah. You'll finally, I think, land on the revenue model uh, yeah. because of scale. Okay. But there could be some hospitals that are willing to give you a fixed fee and it's, that's why I said it all depends on your ambition and your ability to fund it in this period of time. I have one small question here. Uh, other uh, thing yeah. is in, revenue, Hello. in the revenue uh, model. Hello, Yeah. Uh, Niranjan, I think we should be moving forward because we have very okay, little just time. Let me finish. Well, just a quick one. If I, can give it, if I can get a quick answer, I'll do it. Yeah. Otherwise, I'll pass it. Yeah, the the, sure. the plan is the plan is just if the uh, uh, treatment charge is just a fifty thousand. I mean, uh, I want the patient to pay the portal, and we'll issue an admission form after confirming the facility whether the bed is available or not. Then we transfer twenty five thousand to the hospital and retain twenty five thousand with the portal. Once the patient is all right, when uh, we receive a message. Yeah, understood. What's the question? Yeah, the pay. What do you think about this model? If the hospital is willing to take credit from you, you should do it. Yeah, they are they are they are uh, happy as long as they are receiving. Again, the I think it's a non-question. You got many more important questions to answer because what you're saying is, you want to hold on to a a, a money uh, one and number two, it's going to be working capital for you and number three, it's on at least the hospital is accountable for the success and failure because you brought the client in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they're willing to do that, this it should not be even a question. As long as the hospitals are willing to do it, because as long as the patient the Obviously. money as if they are getting up front, they are not worried about that. Yeah. Okay. We need to move on. We got yeah. 19 minutes left. Yeah. Or okay. actually 15 okay. minutes left. Thank you so much. Okay, Dr. Matthew, uh, could you go ahead with your question? Your mic is muted, I think. Hello, Dr. Matthew. Dr. Matthew, could you unmute your mic, please? Hello, Dr. Matthew. Could you please unmute your mic? It's it's muted. Your mic is muted right now. Uh, hello, Dr. Matthew. We can't hear you. Uh, what we can do is, I think we can move on to Jyotirmay. Jyotirmay, can you hear us? Could you please unmute your mic? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, Jyotirmay. Your question, please.
हेलो ज्योतिर्मय हेलो ज्योतिर्मय हेलो ओके विल मूव अहेड टू अमित आई थिंक ज्योतिर्मय कैन यू प्लीज स्पीक आउट कुड यू प्लीज आस्क ए क्वेश्चन योर Jyotirmay we can't hear you we'll move ahead to Amit could you please fix your audio we we'll move forward to Amit then yes hello. Amit please your question can you hear me yeah we can hear you ask yeah, your question yeah. yeah hello good evening sir good evening sir uh, i am trying to create a curated marketplace for b2b business services providers and for software products hello yeah go ahead yeah so my first question is i mean uh, in 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 your outlook i mean how do the investors look at b2b businesses versus b2c businesses and what has been your experience in your entertainment uh, content business when you migrated from b2b i mean how should i look at the things i mean what is the investor scenario like yeah, yeah i think my relevant my experience in the past we relevant because the time at which i was a b2b business there was no investors wanting to invest anything so we didn't okay. get an investment but today if you ask me um i think investors are absolutely fine with b2b businesses provided their scale and their sustainability i think the problem is that at startup level when you look at a b2b business if you can't demonstrate scale there's a problem yeah. the yeah. good part about a b2b business that investors like is that there is no wastage on this marketing budgets and the marketing spends that people in india think is the best way to raise funding but okay. pick up the money and then spend all the money on marketing which makes absolutely no sense because yeah. your conversion ratios go down and down So actually, yeah. people like B two B businesses because they don't, they're not, they're not a cash drain. But B two B businesses have to do two things: you have to be in a sector that is scalable, you have to show multiple clients and stability of income, yeah. you need to show gross margins from day one. Yeah. Otherwise, why are you investing and why are you spending if it's a business of somebody else? Yeah. And sustainability. And if you show those four, I think there are a lot of people in the investor segment who are as keen on B two B as they are on B two C. Okay. And sir, one more question I have uh, on this portal. I am trying to cater to the five broad segments which a business needs, and I have classified them as a uh, marketing, finance, people, technology, and strategy. So out of these five broad categories, I am trying to start with two, three, two, three sub categories in each vertical. So uh, one of the categories I need some more clarity is on people category. Uh, I'll just explain one of the category like technology. We are trying to have three broad sub categories like. websites making mobile apps making and cloud based software solutions so for this all these sub categories i will be having on ground partnerships with people like uh, chartered accountants like tally yeah. okay software understood solutions. understood so in people category what are the gaps you see sir and how i mean uh, in your opinion what are the gaps i mean we can really work on because i am trying to work on a solution approach not on a connecting the people rather than connecting a people with just dial or india mart does yeah no, i understand solutions approach yeah i'll be honest it's an extremely difficult question to ask because the gaps today are wide in every field so i think you need to figure out you can figure it out with two ways one what are you most comfortable and understanding of those sectors where you can add value and select the people and screen them and two okay. if you did a chart of all these sectors and all these sectors that you talk about where is the highest employability i e in digital marketing tomorrow uh, we need 200000 jobs because that's the demand versus in xyz it's 50000 job requirements so pick okay. the five sectors where you know the finance sector is going to be the biggest hire or the banking sector is going to be the biggest hire i'm not saying they will be in fact they're going to be less hires so if you can you go out and there's enough statistics out there to show what are the what are what is the estimated hiring potential over the next 3 years what are the kind of sectors that are going to have more job creations than others Okay. and go with that criterion and mix that with the sectors that you feel you can add value be able to screen people in a intelligent enough manner where your customers will always be happy okay does that make sense okay thank you yes thank you okay you're on mute you're on mute you're on mute yes yes uh dr matthew can you hear us now Can you please unmute your mic? Yeah, Nikhil, yeah. I can. Go ahead. I can. Yeah. Ask. Please go ahead. Ask. Good evening. I'm so sorry about the poor light here. Okay. Uh, 
uh, see, my uh, idea is to it's right in right now. It's an an idea stage is to start an app as well as uh, application mobile application as well as a website to connect uh, the non-resident Indians with the uh, politicians and their respective uh, authorities in India, especially the non-resident Indians in the Middle East. Okay. Uh, so uh, the the question which I have and right now uh, myself and my brother who is an MBA and working in Dubai and I'm based in Kuwait. Okay, we both are in the team. So uh, um, uh, I have two questions. Number one, when you think when you heard this offhanded, uh, would you please tell me uh, what do you feel about the feasibility of this idea? Number one. Number two, since we I am not from a business background, so whom all should I Add in my team according to your point of view. So, to your first question, I would like to understand what is the need you are, uh, what is the need you are, you are fulfilling, and why did you even think of this context? The first impression I guess it is it's very niche. It's very niche. Yes, I don't think exactly. connecting people exactly. online on a platform with people of that caliber, both because the CEOs will want to talk to politicians or whatever else. And I'm assuming people in authority or secretaries and whatever else. That um, that's going to be something that people haven't found resources to do that, and it's cold calling in that context. So my first impression is niche, and where will you go with it? Um, and what what do you think? Why did you actually think of it suddenly? Was it just a personal need that happened? Because at a particular level. If you are doing it, chances are you won't be able to connect with the right politician. Then you'll be connecting with the number three person, the people dissatisfied, and the the right level people who want to reach out to the uh, people there. I think they'll figure out some better access, and they may not think that reaching them online is the best first way to get through. You're on mute. Uh, Dr. Matthew, you're on mute. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. See, uh, see, uh, see, uh, especially in the in the Middle East, you know, we have uh, many low-income earner, I mean, people over here who are working, yep. okay, yep. and uh, they're working, uh, they're working uh, areas, they're working, the, yes. uh, they're living lifestyle. Yeah. So what do they want to, get to reach out to politicians for? Okay, because uh, they, 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 the problems which they are facing over here. Cannot be addressed by the Indian embassy because it's so huge and the numbers are so high that the embassy cannot. And attend what makes to you think on the other side that the government will be happy to do this? How are you going to facilitate uh, what the embassy can't do? Yeah, uh, see, uh, uh, th that's why I said there should be an application, a mobile application, which uh, people can use, okay, either in a subscription mode or. No, I got your concept. Can... I got your concept. Have yeah. you done homework that the bureaucracy in India is receptive to being available on an app for anyone um, and everyone falling out of the Middle East? Um, uh, right now, I'm I'm concentrating more on the politicians because hopefully within a few months or a few a few months, the voting rights would come for the non-resident Indians. Okay, I mean the the, the cases in the Supreme Court and it's almost yep. Yep. nearing okay. the judgment. Okay. okay. So once uh, there is a voting right for the uh, non-resident Indians, definitely the politicians will have to heed to their uh, needs. Okay. But normally the politicians don't have immediate answers. It's more just the secretary and the bureaucrats and the IS officers that have the right answers. So please understand, okay, the I'm person will be calling for X. The politician will do it only at election time, and will be more saying good idea, good not idea. Okay, I'll take it under advice. I've made a note. I'll pass it on to my secretary, who will then see something about this. And you might find that actually the Indian embassy there might be more efficient. So, what is the responsibility you're going to take for the task and the delivery? Would be another question. Okay. Okay. So I think you need to think of the practicality of that. I get what you're saying in terms of the model. My advice would be that it's niche. It's an interesting okay. idea, born out of a need okay. and the frustrations that you must be facing. But okay. if you really want to do it, try it. No, try it in one state where you come from. Try it with ten politicians, okay. one state, and do an entire pilot. And see how All consistent right. it is when that when 50 of your colleagues and whatever else do it with them. What is the response level? Okay. What is the quality of response? What is the quality of answers? And are people actually getting their problems solved or not? All right, all right. Because okay. otherwise, what will happen is you'll invest uh, in an app, okay. then you market it all over the Middle East, and before you know it, you'll have spent some amount of money of your hard-earned money 
I would suggest pilot it. And after you pilot it, still answer the question that if it's a niche business, am I still happy doing it? Uh, all, all right. Okay, okay. Can I add, uh, can I add one more question to this, yeah. please? Okay. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Oh, okay. Uh, see, right now I am I am 40 plus. Okay, I am 40 years old. Okay. Some people told me that uh, this is not the right age for me to do a startup, especially in a field outside my uh, main career. Okay. Is there any connection between the age and uh, the time to start up or the success? Personally, rate? for me, no. Personally, for me, no. I think it actually depends on the business. Now, if you're losing, if you're giving up a good job and you're getting into a niche business because you're passionate about it, but it won't go anywhere in two years. You may regret it, but if you are if you are very clear about your idea and you think it's scalable, I don't think it makes a difference whether you're 30 or 40 or 45. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Happy to hear that. Yeah. So we got a last question. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, Jyotirna, could you please unmute your mic? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Can you hear you. Carry on. Hi, Rani. Uh, so I have a tech tech background. Okay, I like to put a specific question. So, the venture I'm starting, as in, I'm in the ideation phase, and the idea involves the technology component. Now, the question was that uh, should I kind of look at developing the technology uh, in house? Second, should I kind of get a technology company to do it, and later on, when there's funding, kind of have an in house team? Or thirdly, look at the white label solution for the uh, core technology element that already exists in the market. Difficult, difficult to give a general comment, but um, more or less at startup stage, I think it makes a lot of sense to be able, if you can find the right company to outsource it to in the beginning, uh, it is a good idea. Knowing full well that it's a, it's a, it's a stopgap arrangement. So you obviously right. have to see to it that all your intellectual property of that is kept to yourself and those are very clear in the contract. Uh, okay. You never, for you to go find these technical people, then to train them, then to be in sync of your own in-house means your project and your startup date will be much longer. This way, if you're going right. to a firm and outsourcing it, they've already done all that problems. Second, you're right. going to learn a lot as you go along with these three, four months. So it'll be learned on the other person's account. And you'll be a lot more wiser and then you'll be able to pick the right people versus you buy hire somebody, then he's wrong and your project gets delayed. Um, right. Yeah, and this I, I, I don't know there. There is a white label, uh, like you know, technology provider who is kind of having this core uh, technology component ready, and they also white label the solution. Is it still a wise option to probably go in with a white label solution or uh, go in with like you know get, getting a, a core technology company to develop it? Is there any depends on your budget? Depending on your budget and your business model right now. If the white label okay. is not compromising on your offering of the service, there's nothing wrong with it in the beginning to try it out. However, okay. if the white label does not make you a distinguishing product and your whole business the foundation is at risk or question mark because there's no differentiation based on the fact that you're doing a white label product, then something has to be in the offering which is so unique that you have a differentiator because now technology is not your differentiator. So what is? Sure. Because if you don't launch right. with a differentiator, then that's going to be your challenge. Okay. Uh, and a quick, uh, a quick last question. Now, uh, the venture I'm looking at is a rural-based venture which involves having offline content hotspots in villages which have no or negligible access to internet. Okay, so in terms of uh, gauging traction, what would be a good price to aim at in terms of validating that, okay, this concept makes sense or no? I think you have to choose a geography rather than a site. I think pick one area and try it out uh, rather than look at an overall site because you, you don't know what traction you're going to get onto that from that point of view. Uh, and it's a very fragmented sector in the social space. Um, so you might put it on a site and then you find that I'm not getting the response and my product is bad, but actually the site may not be getting traction. So I think it's a combination of trying multiple sites, if there, if there is such a thing, definitely try multiple sites and also you'll have to get some feet on the ground and get some offline feedback in the beginning, especially if it's rural. Right, so in that case, just to understand, would it be like saying, uh, take up say Panwil, Taluka and kind of focus on that or look at say, I need to get access to at least traction from 100 villages 
or to look at say in terms of customers i need 100000 customers to use the product which which of the three i think they all add up to the same thing but yes you have to catch one taluka or district or gram panchayat or block or whatever you want to define it depending on okay. how large you want to get okay. and go for it okay thank you thank you okay so i think we are done with everybody's questions i'm sure this session was highly insightful thank you thank so you so much mr rani for being a part of this and i'm sure everybody is very very satisfied with the kind of answers that you had well hopefully thank you i'm yeah, i'm sure everybody is so uh, i think that will be it for the first uh, google hangout session for this mentorship track uh, i will be signing off on this note and Uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing you for the rest of the interactions and once again ending on the note of thank you for mr roni for thank you part. thanks a lot bye guys thank, thank you, you. Uh, bye bye again thank you bye bye